What's up guys? I'm Logan and this is Killing Sims and we're here to show you our second van build. We're going to be referencing our first build several times throughout this video. So I'm going to link a video to that somewhere up here if you want to check it out. It's the 2017 Ram Promaster 2500. And this one is a gasoline engine. Uh, for all you foreign friends, it's a petroleum engine. So let's check it out. We'll start with the cab. For the cab of the vehicle, it came with all the classic bells and whistles. It has cruise control, a backup cam, and this snack shelf right behind me comes super handy. We didn't have that last time. Um, also, last time we had a three-seater, which comes in clutch for snuggling on long road trips. But uh, as you can see on this one, we have a two-seater, which makes it nice for the swivel seat. And uh, so we installed the swivel seat, and we can also, we like getting in and out instead of having to climb over the three-seater. Under the seat, we have this Webasto heater. It's a Webasto Airtop 2000 STC. It's a lot smaller than our last furnace, and it runs off of gasoline or the petroleum from our, our, our vehicle tank. This is how we control it. You can turn it on. You'll see right here there's a light. There's a rheostat. This works great, and it'll actually give you blink codes. All right, and right above, we have all this space. It goes all the way back. We don't even know what to do with all that space. It's awesome. Moving from our cab area, we have this little triangle of space. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's where we keep our toolbox, our broom, Swiffer, just stuff like that. It's really nice to utilize. Coming over, this is our tall cabinet. The first cupboard is where we keep our hanging clothes. We really like being able to hang up our clothes because it keeps things from getting wrinkly, as well as we can search through the options that we have for the day. Also, we keep some of our pants or extra shirts kind of rolled up underneath. Just a ton of space in this cabinet for us. Right below this, this looks like a drawer, but it's actually our table. It's hooked in by a little eye bolt gate and it slides out. It's butcher block, the same material that we use for our countertop. We love having this here. It actually creates a great space for also sitting on our swivel seat, being on our laptop, eating food, preparing food. It just doubles our counter space. Moving down from there, we have our two drawers as toiletries, some more clothes, and this is our fridge. This is a very different fridge than we had in our first van. The first van, it was a stand-up, open-door fridge. It also ran off of propane. This is a chest-style fridge that runs off of DC power. We were worried about the draw on our batteries, how hard this fridge would be, but so far it's been fantastic. To be honest, we haven't barely noticed any drop, even on really, really hot days. This keeps our food nice and cool without taking a lot from our batteries. What's also cool about it is it has a backup battery. So if for whatever reason we ran out of power somehow, this fridge has a backup battery of I think 16 hours. So no matter what, our food's not gonna go bad on us. We don't have to worry about that. I'll go ahead and pull it out for you guys. So it opens from the front and you can see we do have food in here right now, but there's still a ton of space left. That's one thing we were really impressed about the chest style fridges is they offer a ton of space for food. Last thing I want to talk about with this fridge is actually the drawer. We have this on a 250 pound drawer slide so we're not worried about filling this up with food and damaging the drawer slide. As well as the table, we also have that on a 250 pound drawer slide. Also next to the drawer slides, we have these little latches and this is what we have on all of our cupboards and cabinets to keep them from flinging open when we're driving especially the fridge because it's such a heavy drawer when you turn it's very likely for it to slide out so we actually installed two latches on either side and when we slide it in it clicks in place and it actually takes a little bit of a pull to get this to pull out so that way we're not worried about it sliding open while we're driving and it's been great under the cabinet underneath the sink on this one we added these metal strips for these magnetic spice jars Really nice that we don't have spices rolling around, just save space as well. In this tote, we have our bathroom stuff like shampoo, we have a sunscreen, we have vitamins. Right here, we have our first aid kit, and then behind that is our gray tank. So, water drains into our sink, comes out along our Wado's P trap, and right into the tank. And when we're at an appropriate spot, we can just release this valve and water will dump in underneath the van. It's great because we don't have to go outside to actually release that valve. It's just comfort of your own home. Release the grid. On this side, we have our Thetford porta potty. It's great. You can pull it out, do your business. We mainly picked this toilet because it had such high reviews. 
but also has a battery powered flush. In height and width, it's the closest you can actually get to feeling like you're on a real toilet. And there's a secret toilet paper compartment. It's a great thing to have in a van. I move it up. This is usually wasted space in cabinetry. You, uh, you hardly ever see this. I didn't even know about this until like last year. And uh, boom, pops out. You can put stuff in there. Wasted space isn't really an option in van life. And so as much as you can maximize your space, here we've got our brush for washing dishes. We've got some wet wipes, really whatever you want to stuff in there. And right here we have our kitchen area. We did install under cabinet lighting that we really like because not only does it light up our workspace, but also at night when we don't want all of our lights on, we'll just turn this on and it just lights up the van just enough. Right over here on the backsplash, you can see we have an outlet. The top one is like a USB outlet and then the lower one is more like a DC outlet, like we can plug a car jack into it. And the switch underneath is our water pump. That way we don't have our water pump constantly drawing power, but we can just flip it on whenever we actually want to run water. So we can turn that on and whenever we're done using water, turn that off and not have that draw on our batteries. Moving over from there, we have our two burner cooktop. It is propane and it's lit with a lighter, but we really like this cooktop in specific because it's spread out enough that we can have two pots and pans going at the same time without crowding each other. And it heats up and does our cooks our food really well. And then over here, this is mainly open space for prep area. Our countertops are a butcher block and we did do an epoxy cover over it so that way we're not worried about the wood getting damaged or scuffed up. It's really easy to clean that way. Right above that we have our hanging fruit hammock I think it's called. We put all of our produce in here. Obviously we need to stock up soon. It's looking pretty sparse. Um, and right underneath that we haven't seen this in a lot of other vans. Actually any other vans. So this is something I'm excited about. It's our little laundry shoe or trash chute whatever we use it for. Right now we're using it for laundry. This actually drops into the garage. So we built our garage, it's a little different. It's underneath the bed and it actually comes out like a little mini L shape right here. That is because we wanted to be able to store our mountain bikes as well as skis, anything that's longer than about four and a half feet. So if I open up this drawer right here, this goes directly into the garage. We really like being able to access this from the inside. Technically, if we wanted to worm our way into the garage through this door, we can, but that just gives us so much more space for bikes and storage in our garage, and it's, we're not hurting for space in our kitchen at all. Right here, all of these drawers are cookware space, anything we need in there, that gives us plenty of room. And up here, we have our three hanging cabinets. So we have this gas struts to keep them open. That's so nice, so you're not trying to balance things on your head. And then right underneath here is just our little hook latches so they don't go flying open. Here's our bench. This bench cushion is upholstered with outdoor fabric, so it makes it really easy to clean and it makes it a lot more water resistant. There's two portions of the bench that flip up. Um, they're both accessible with the cushion on, but for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna take it off. This portion of the bench we had open up this way so we can access it from outside as well as inside the van. It is purely storage space and a lot of it. And this is the electrical portion. We do keep our shoes in here. A lot of people overlook where to keep the shoes. And this is a nice spot to keep them just kind of out of the way. We put this shelf above our battery. I'm not gonna dive too much into the electrical. I'm just gonna breeze over it. And if you have any questions or you want another video on that, uh, please let us know in the comments. We have 670 watts of solar on the roof. It comes down into our solar charge controller right behind this wall, the 60 amp. And you can actually monitor how that's doing right on this screen. That'll charge our 200 amp hour lithium ion battery. Another way we can charge this battery is using our 2000 watt inverter charger. It allows us to have shore power. So you plug in an extension cord from a house or an RV park into the van and that'll allow us to charge the battery. It also inverts the DC power from our battery into 120 volts for this house outlet. On this opposite side, we have a fuse block that has the fuses to all of our appliances. The only downside to the lithium battery is if it gets too cold and it continues to charge, then that could damage the battery. So we installed a heated mat underneath the battery that is thermostat controlled. So if it drops too cold, it'll heat up this box and keep the battery safe. That's it for the electrical. 
I know that was quick. That was the Cliff Notes version. So if you want a video on that, please let us know in the comments. Okay, moving on to the bedroom area. I first want to point out this wall. It is cutesy, but it's also very functional. In our last van, we didn't have a mirror and I felt that. Honestly, it's nice to have a designated spot where I can get ready in the day or just check ourselves before we go out into the public. Right next to that, we have a little blackboard for taking notes and then a little bulletin board with some pictures on it and quotes that just really helps it feel homey for us. And then right above me is this fan. This is an awesome thing to have in the van because between these two windows on either side of the bed and this fan, it pulls out this cross breeze that is so nice for warm nights. It honestly cools us down. The temperature in the van has been great. It is an automatic fan, which is great because it has a remote or we just click a button and it opens itself up. It also has a rain sensor, which is really comforting for if we ever leave the van and have the fan going to cool it down. If a rainstorm does come through, we don't have to worry about it soaking our stuff while we're gone. So the second it feels rainfall on it, it will close itself up. That is great. Behind me, let me talk to you about the bed for a second. This is a six inch foam mattress, full size. Right up by the pillows, there are two charging ports. It's just USB for us to be able to charge our phones when we sleep at night. And then the other thing that we're really excited about with this bedroom area is these two cubbies. I haven't seen this on a lot of vans. It's just these two little spots right here. It's on either side. It just allows us to put our phone somewhere when it's charging or our glasses, jewelry, take out my earrings, put them in there. Just a little kind of nightstand cubby to be able to put our things when we're getting ready for bed. Super cute, also functional. I really enjoy it. Anyways, I think that's everything for inside the van. So we'll go ahead and take you outside. Now onto the garage. It might look a little dark in here. We did install this light switch right next to this DC outlet. And as you can see, it lights it up pretty well. It's nice because it makes our gear accessible both at night and in the daytime. The outside of the garage, well, the inside of the garage is lined with a rhino liner, which makes it really durable when things rub and bump against it, as well as mostly waterproof. Also on the floor, we have not only a rhino line, but we added this diamond plate mat. It's a rubber. It's nice because it not only protects our gear from getting bumped and scuffed up, but also the van itself. Another thing that we're really proud about is these mountain bikes that we can fit in here. They fit comfortably, really easy to take in and out. As we talked about a little earlier, we cut into the cabinets a little bit so that tires fit better. Right behind that, we have three folding hooks. That's really nice because if we want them out of the way, they'll just fold on up. Otherwise, we'll have them hanging down like we do now. We'll have like our rope or backpacks hanging from it, and it just puts our things off of the ground and up and out of the way. Right behind these totes, we have a car jack. We had to relocate it for the Wobasto heater, but it's just nice tucked out of the way and easy to get to. Next to that, we have our five gallon propane tank. We did get a mount from Amazon that we've really loved. It's just bolted right into the ground. That way we're not worried about it rolling around or anything like that. And right above that, we have our solar charge controller. That's the body of the charge controller. In the electrical cupboard, you saw the, like a face of it, but this is where the entire mass is contained. Now onto the water system, we have this 30 gallon tank right here. It goes down into our strainer, our water pump, and our accumulator. We also installed this winterizing kit that allows us to bypass the tank and fill our system with potable antifreeze to prevent damage during the winter. And here we have our water heater. It's a tankless water heater. It runs off of the propane. And as you can see, we have this shower nozzle coming right off of our hot water. So let's go to the shower setup. show you how this works we have this shower rod right here with hooks at the end so we can put it into place kind of keeps these doors nice and rigid uh, if we're in the wind or while you're showering you don't want the doors closing in on you and uh, that'll work great we have this extendable clothesline it's a super helpful device it has a steel cable that can be pulled out and locked into place we just thread it through the shower curtain and slide it onto the other door we really like this because it keeps the inside of our van dry as well as you get a little bit of privacy if someone's in the inside of the van. Right here we installed another shower mount and so we can just mount this shower head right on there as well as we have this valve that we can just turn the water on for the hot water heater 
and the water comes on nice and easy. And then we have this pocket right here full of, we can put our soap and our loofah. And we use biodegradable soap because we're just showering it in the outside. So it's good for the environment to use something that, that's good for the environment. So we'll just hook this up. It has different angle settings as well as it's on a hose so you can get the rest of your body. And that about sums it up. All right, that is it for our van tour video. Hopefully you saw something that gives you ideas for a future van build. Speaking of your future van builds, we actually really like this process. And so we'd love to come out to you guys and help you with your van. Slide into our DMs on Instagram or comment below where you're at, what project you're working on. No catches. Honestly, at this point, we just want to get to know more van lifers and give back to such an awesome community. We love this community. It's very tight knit. Everyone that we've met that does van life is really cool. And so we'd love to meet you guys. We'd love to check out your hometown and uh, maybe you could show us around. So if you want to see more videos, either of our van build, how we did it, our van life, or even us helping build out other people's vans, like, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys later. Next video.